People who don't get stressed during a presentation, school, or work. What's your secret? Experience. I used to get nervous and now I don't. Not sure when or why that happened. This is the boring, unappealing but best answer. I was constantly nervous in any speaking situation. It didn't matter if it was just an informal presentation to my research group or a big talk at a conference. I stuttered and struggled through every talk. Over the course of a few years, I did public lectures to hundreds of people, I ran a D&D game, and ended up in a corporate job where, at one point, I found myself giving a talk every day for a month. Now, I'm completely confident in any public speaking situation. I'll talk about basically anything in front of any group willing to listen. I totally sympathize with anyone who finds this advice terrifying, but you can't do better than just getting experience. Find opportunities to talk in a formal context, pick small groups or topics you feel really confident in, but struggle through the embarrassment until you don't care anymore. By the way guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It will help us out quite a bit, and if you don't enjoy the videos in the future anymore, you can always unsubscribe. Let's get back to the video. Public speaking doesn't bother me if I know the material really well. Know what you're talking about, and you'll be fine. Don't be afraid to not know something too. If someone asks you something you don't know, just say so. Yeah, a presentation is much easier to give when you are the expert in the room. Also, if asked a question, don't spout off if you don't know, just say that's a great question, I don't have an answer for you off the top of my head, but let me get back to you. Also, the only person that's going to lose sleep over your bad presentation is yourself. So don't be so hard on yourself. Plus, the audience wants you, for the most part, to succeed and give a good presentation. They'll likely give the benefit of the doubt where possible. An exception to this might be research conference presentations. Sometimes the audience members will ask questions in bad faith for any number of reasons, including, they misunderstood your work, and think you messed up, you didn't cite their previous work, they need to assert their own dominance on that topic, they have research in the works, that is threatened by your work, or they simply like to argue. The important part is to realize that very little of that is actually about you, and those types of questions get asked to everyone. Honestly just remembering that most likely, no one is paying attention anyway, especially if it's school. This. If you're in school, literally nobody cares about your presentation. Unless you're into what you're doing. Then although <laughs> decide to start with you, and ask questions that seem to be related, but really aren't, so you have no idea how to answer. It is okay to have limited knowledge of all the aspects of an issue, particularly if they are only tangentially related. And I do not know, but I will check and get back to you, or that is outside the scope of this presentation, at the moment, but we can discuss it later should suffice. Great question. I don't want to get too off track here, but let's discuss offline afterwards. Top tip for any presentation is to tell people at the beginning whether they should ask questions throughout, or save them for the end. If you'll allow them throughout, introduce the concept of a parking lot for any questions that will get too off topic and push you over time. This can be a physical whiteboard slash post-it on the wall, or just a note you take on paper. Then, for any questions you don't want to answer, great question but I think it's going to take us out of scope. Let's add it to the parking lot and we can follow up offline. Or in a future session. Honestly, most people are never going to follow up on that stuff. At the very least it buys you some time and doesn't derail the conversation. I get so stressed before the presentation that the actual presentation comes as a relief. Oh my goodness I can't agree enough. I spend all the time leading up, double checking things, wondering about adding more, editing slides or whatever just slightly, just going neurotic, and losing my mind. Like today I'm procrastinating on reddit before a presentation to 600 some students this evening joy. But, once I'm actually talking I know it will be a breeze, and then be over. Just keep remembering, I've done it, before I can do it again. 
The real reasons I had stuffed animals in my room so I can practice my school presentations on them with their unblinking eyes. Do it over and over to get timing, inflection, pronunciations, rotating head slash eye contact, etc. right. My hands would shake and it would be damp from sweat and it was just stuffed animals looking at me. Actual presentation? My body just going through the motions because I had practiced so much the week and night before. Hold on to the remote control slash pen slash pointer tightly as it's my fidget spinner slash stress ball. Definitely faking it but made it. Practically flawless. The audience always say they couldn't tell how nervous I was. Definitely sweated through the deodorant that was slathered on in the back of my shirt. So wear 2 plus shirts, tank top slash t-shirt to soak it up. Actual shirt that's nice looking for presentation. Maybe a cardigan slash blazer for professional shoulders and inevitable cold from all that sweat. Every. Single. Time. I still get stage fright. Go home and change, and just get away from all those people. I used to get super nervous before any sort of public speaking event. Shaky hands, sweating, nausea the whole nine yards. Eventually I landed a job as a corporate trainer. I was desperate for a job and dollar sign, so I just had to get up in a room of 30 plus people every day and present the training material and answer questions. Honestly I just pretended I didn't care, and faked it till I made it. Now, it actually doesn't bother me to speak in front of a group. If this is a challenge that you are facing, maybe look into local public speaking groups such as Toastmasters. If you're able to stow the nerves and act confidently, faking it, you might realize that you're actually quite knowledgeable about what you're presenting, assuming you know the material. It becomes a feedback loop of confidence. Assuming you know the material. Back in my 20s I worked for a software company, part of what I did was training. Most up to this point, had been one or two people in front of a PC. Suddenly I was being sent across the country, to train a room full of people at a major pharmaceutical company, yeah, I was stressed. Best piece of advice my boss gave me, remember, you already know the material better than they do. I'm vain and I love attention. How I handle boring that's where the neuroses are. I was gonna say all sorts of stuff about how I won my school's public speaking contest by just embracing the audience and knowing that people actually respect the courage it takes to speak in front of others and how you gotta know with yourself that, since speaking comes naturally in all other situations, the same can apply to public speaking etc. But then I read your comment and realized this is really all there is to it. You gotta like the attention. Me too. I had all these answers, but yeah at the end of the day I like getting people to listen to me. You gotta like the attention. Now there's plenty of introverts that are great public speakers, musicians as well. According to Google David Bowie, Kurt Cobain and Freddie Mercury were all introverts. They just did the same thing as me. Practice practice practice. Big same. I'm a newish manager, and training is a part of my job. I can talk to a room of 50 high level staff across various agencies in the field without breaking a sweat, but imposter syndrome kicks in when I have to approve timesheets. Preparation. I know that may sound like a cheap answer but that's honestly my best hedge against anxiety. Edit, thanks for them gold and silver coins. I agree, since I have crippling social anxiety, I come well prepared for my presentations. Though being overly prepared, makes me sound like a robot who just drones out the information. That happy balance between relaxed and prepared, has eluded me for 30 years. Yeah I don't fully understand it, but I'm pretty anxious about talking to someone in the street, but have quite happily got up on stage, and given conference presentations to hundreds of people paying to see me, dealt with slight disasters, all the rest. And yet I'm too nervous even to make eye contact with the checkout person in the supermarket, much of the time. I think for me, if I try to make sense of it, when doing public presentations, even when teaching or running workshops, etc, I kind of inhabit a different fictional version of myself, a mask or mantle that has a fake, or real, confidence. Somehow that works, but I can't make it work in everyday life. 
Maybe it just seems more real. I wish I could solve this. I don't remember the people that bombed presentations, because those aren't formative memories. No matter how much I bomb this presentation, no one will remember in a month, especially since they are stressed about their own presentation. I don't know, I still remember the guy in 7th grade who misread the word citizen when reading aloud. Yeah I remember a few years ago in college we all had to do presentations, and one guy went up there without any notes, and was the most stressed I've ever seen someone doing a presentation. Like could barely speak or remember what he was supposed to be saying, and when he did speak he kept pausing for a good 10 to 15 seconds mid-sentence and between sentences. I have no clue why he didn't bring up flashcards at least. He sounded like he was about to burst into tears for the whole thing. It was absolutely awful to watch, and vividly sticks in my memory, because presentations make me very anxious too, and I just felt so so bad for him, and any time I feel like not strenuously preparing slash practicing for a presentation the memory motivates me to just do it, so I don't end up like him lol. Oh man I was this guy, when it came to presentations. Once I had to do one for a work course, and crammed all the work in the night, before with no practice at all, no surprise then the next day I'm three slides deep staring at this screen wondering what the context was behind this picture I had added in, and my brain just went, yeah you're not recovering from this, I turned slowly looked at everyone, and just said I'm sorry I have to leave for a minute, and walked out the room. It still keeps me up at night sometimes. How you prepare is key. Don't write a word for word speech. Develop your presentation in the form of questions that you can answer. That way, when you get off of your plan or have a question pop up that you didn't explicitly plan for, you're already in the mindset of solving a problem rather than reciting a speech. It allows you to pivot and improvise much more effectively. Haha. <laughs> I write the speech word for word, so that I have an idea of what I want to say and feel like I'm prepared. But I never try to read it off or memorize it. I just speak about the topic and use my general memory of what I had written as signposts in my mind, of what my main points are. I feel like being forced to write the speech, even without the intention of reciting it, forces me to gather the information and my thoughts in a logical way. There is also some security in knowing that, if worst comes to worst, and I get too overwhelmed or nervous I could find the notes and read it verbatim. Although I've never gotten to this point knowing I could makes me more confident. Yeah I definitely write all my speeches word for word. I memorize them, but just don't care if I forget a line. What is most important is that I get the first sentence of each topic right and that allows me to seg into any part of my presentation smoothly. For something that I haven't seen posted yet. Know what you have to say is important. Tell yourself that you know what you are doing and that other people need to hear what you have to say. I've attended several research conferences, I notice the boomer age presenters just DGAF and read directly from cards without looking up once. If it helps, it doesn't really matter if you are a subject matter expert with several dozen peer-reviewed papers or a student. I think most people get nervous speaking in front of crowds. Just remind yourself that it's okay. This is what I tell myself who is a research scientist. People are coming to listen to your words. You know your research backwards and forwards. You know it by heart. Talk to them, like you're talking to a friend who is genuinely interested in what you have to say, because they are. Sometime during pharmacy school rotations, I had to do a NDU, new drug update, presentation for the hospital staff. I realized then, that it wasn't just some presentation for the sake of school, to grade slash judge me, or whatever it was mostly b slash c it was useful to have someone, me, read about this new drug and simply inform the staff about the details of this new drug. Then I realized, that that was kind of the point of presentations in real life, not for me to be graded, but for me to inform people. That realization helped a lot. It can help. If you recognize those physical symptoms, tight chest sweaty hands, or whatever it is for you, not as something is wrong, but rather your body preparing you for something important your stress response isn't as scary, if you know it's there, to help you be a b 
if something scary shows up. These physical symptoms are similar to the physical symptoms of excitement. I keep telling myself it's excitement, not fear, and it's much easier to ride the wave and turn a negative feeling into a positive one. As long as I've prepped. I do exactly this. Years ago I'd be like oh damn, my stomach is so full of butterflies, I'm so nervous. Now I instead say oh damn, my stomach is so full of butterflies, I'm so excited, and through this, I can convince myself, that I'm having fun. If nerves get worse I'll just reinforce it even more, wow I can't believe how excited I am. Can't wait for this presentation. It works somehow. If only this could be used to achieve immortality. I can't believe how alive I am. Some headless tube. They are not just similar, they are physiologically identical. So this totally works. Takes a little while to get used to it, but this is the technique I use. Over time, you survive your speeches and your body is like how that went better than expected. Maybe I was excited. And next time it gets easier. I thought I was scared of public speaking, until I had to do this one assignment. As a generally quiet guy, I thought getting up in front of people and saying stuff was the last thing I'd want to do. However, a switch flipped in my brain at the perfect moment. Just before beginning, I realized that everyone had to shut up and listen to me and let me explain all those many many thoughts that rattle around in my brain. Think of it as an opportunity to get something off your chest. You don't owe the audience anything. They are getting something from your cathartic rant. I'm picturing someone on stage during a long presentation, gesticulating wildly, occasionally tossing out an and here's the other thing, as they go into the next topic in an angry rant. Lol, I can also imagine going to a science conference, to hear about climate change, nuclear technology and all, and then this guy shows up ranting about how he hates his boss or what he thinks about vegans. Couple of things, that worked really well for me, dressing up. At least personally, when I throw on a suit and tie, I feel unstoppable. Knowing that I at least look nice can take the edge off the fear of not doing well. If you can, try to memorize, or at least be very familiar, with the first paragraph or so of your speech. Maybe you don't have time to prep for the whole thing, but if you can start off strong, you'll feel a lot more comfortable for the rest of the speech, plus you'll have made a good impression on the crowd already, note cards help. Take some time and watch some TED talks on YouTube. Find somebody who's presenting style you vibe with, then try to model your style after them. Don't be afraid to admit, if you don't know something. If your presentation has a Q slash A and you get asked a difficult question, it's way better to just say I'll look into this, and get back to you with an answer than to just flounder, and try to BS something. Hope this helps. Take some time and watch some TED talks on YouTube. Find somebody who's presenting style you vibe with, then try to model your style after them. This is great advice. Also watching professional debates help too, except the Trump vs Biden ones. Those are probably not the best choice so try to avoid it. But TED talks, debates, news reporters, and so forth seem to really help. I personally learn from actors too, and reciting their lines, to help with my intonations and all that. I just say, <laughs> what happens happens. It helps that I have enough self-confidence to either do well in something, or make up for it later. The make up for it later part is key, because you can be a bumbling idiot and still ask, what do I need to do to make up for this? And then do it as they told you to do it. Edit, I missed the keyword, presentations, but my point stands, because as someone else said, people are only worried about messing up their own presentation. They won't and can't remember yours within a couple weeks. Yeah for me, it's two things one I just don't give a to I'm an absolute Eddie hassle, and could talk my way out of a hostage situation. Half the time I don't even prep I can just go with the flow. Don't know what you're supposed to say next, time to engage the audience with a question. But honestly if you just sound like you know what you're talking about it works. Double shot of whiskey. Really helped me during show and tell in 4th grade. UHH. If you are old enough to be drinking, 
In all seriousness, my former roommate had mentioned doing a shot or drinking a beer before interviews, so I tried a beer before each of the two biggest major speaking milestones in my degree program, and they definitely helped. Didn't cure the stress, but definitely made it easier to focus on what I was doing and focus less on my stress. I also have had really really bad public speaking fear. Giving lots and lots of, occasionally really bad, presentations has definitely helped. Also I ended up giving a lot of my presentations fully scripted. It's not great, but it was a heck of a lot better than the alternative. Lastly, at this point I know that at least I can't do worse than that one presentation I gave a couple years ago. Which is oddly freeing. It was horrible, and I survived, and I never have to face those people again. Beta blockers. Yep. Propranolil honestly changed my professional life. I'm mentally okay with presentations, as long as I'm prepared, and even enjoy them, but I'd get horrible physical symptoms of anxiety, like a shaky voice, chills, shortness of breath so bad I could barely talk. Propranolil gets rid of all of that to the point where I can be comfortable in a job that requires public speaking. I take it for interviews, presentations, etc. For me, zero side effects other than dry mouth. It's the best. Beta blockers prevent tremors and help with the physical symptoms of anxiety, shaky hand slash voice, slows down heart rate a bit. They do nothing for your brain on their own. For me, this breaks the cycle, where I'm nervous about a presentation, I get anxiety, that my voice will be shaky, which gives me more anxiety, and then it snowballs. Dude I just had to speak up in a zoom meeting with 100 coworkers and the last word of one of my first sentences just cracked so hard from adrenaline, that it sounded, like I was about to start crying, I'm a 40 year old man btw. Then my bottom lip shook for a secretary, and I got control after someone responded to my question. I kept going later just talking totally normal, but good lord this memory is so cringy to me now wtf. Preparation. It sounds like a cliche answer, but it's so true. If I'm giving a presentation, I run through it at least once daily for the entire week leading up to it. Another is using a template. I always use a cover slide followed by an agenda slide. On the cover slide, I always introduce myself, the topic, and why it is important one or two sentences for each. Then on the agenda slide, I just say in this presentation we will cover and go down the bullets on the agenda. This allows you to prepare easily, since you know exactly what you'll be saying, and calm your nerves in the beginning, since it's very simple points with little room for error. Same at the end. To avoid crickets on a queue and a slide, I always have one or two questions in mind. If I get no questions, I'll say something like one question I often get about this topic, or however introducing the question makes sense. Then, after that question, I ask again, if anyone has anything, and if not, it's okay to move on at that point. I have a few other tips. I got very comfortable presenting after doing a public speaking class in graduate school and actually taking the teachings of it seriously. I'll add more tips if people are interested. While taking questions, what's a very good technique is to repeat the question. Rephrase it even if you have to. There's three reasons to do it. Make sure others heard it, ESP if you have a microphone and they don't, others will not have heard the question get a chance to thin down the question by rephrasing. Give you a bit more time and confidence to start with the answer. You can deal with harder things more easily if you had a few seconds to process it. And above all, don't be afraid to say you don't know slash need to look something up slash will answer it offline as it goes too far off topic or is too long and complex to answer in the time you have. This is the end of the video. Thank you guys for staying with me till the end. If you enjoyed watching this, you might as well watch these two.